got a score to settle with that son of a bitch. Devil May Cry. What's up guys, this is RBG hitting you guys up on another trailer breakdown on something I haven't posted on this channel in quite some time. A few days ago we got an awesome announcement that we'll be getting a sequel, a true sequel to the popular franchise Devil May Cry. I've compiled a bunch of notes and high quality images that will be used for this analysis, but before we jump into that I want to remind you that I'm currently giving away free gaming mouses. Since you guys have supported this channel I've linked up with Mono to give you their brand new gaming mouse. It features a high FPS rate, 7 different switches such as the back and forth button, an adjustable DPI, micro switches back with LED lights, and much more. As I mentioned you can get this mouse absolutely free. All you gotta do is pay for the shipping and handling which averages around $5 depending on your location. The link will be in the description box below so make sure you jump on that while the offer lasts. But as you can see I'm no stranger to posting DMC related content on this channel. I know most of my viewers discovered my channel after watching my Devil May Cry cutscene movies and even the less favorable reboot DMC. So you can probably tell that I was looking forward to this game. I wasn't sure if I wanted to provide coverage or not so I asked you guys if you wanted a breakdown of the E3 trailer and the majority of you guys said yes. So here we are trading on familiar territory. Now before I start breaking the trailer down, I want to give you guys my overall impression since some of you asked what I thought about it. First and foremost, let me just say that based on the overall aesthetic, this is a huge far cry from the Devil May Cry the Die Hard fans are used to. The design definitely has a more photorealistic look where the characters tend to look like actual people as opposed to that sort of Japanese anime-esque look that we've seen in the previous installments. It kind of feels like they decided to draw the line between the design Ninja Theory provided in the reboot and a little of Devil May Cry 4, and to that I have to say I'm very pleased. If you think about it, the franchise seems to be lacking that horror element that made it popular during its earlier installments. Grounding it more in reality will give it that suspenseful feeling it so desperately needs. As far as the looks are concerned, everything else we loved about DMC 3 and 4 still look about the same, which is good, and the over the top action cutscenes look to be back in full effect. During an interview given at the DMC 5's E3 reveal, leading director Hideki Itsuno mentioned that in order for them to make the game relevant for today, they needed to make something fans could take one glance at and know that it's quality. He went on saying that without the proper care, their choice of photorealism combined with the gaming animation could lead to an uncanny valley of action. So they put a ton of effort to ensure that the game would still play like your usual DMC game, but still feel at home with realistic graphics. So if there's anyone having doubts about this title not playing like its predecessors, you can rest assured that it'll do that and then some. But getting right into the trailer breakdown, the first thing we see is an old character of the black ethnicity who sounds quite familiar saying and I quote, we've known each other for a long time. The talented actor doing the voice of that particular character is none other than Bo Billingsley. For those who are big into anime dubs, you might notice his voice from popular series like Cowboy Bebop where he voiced Jet Black, or the fourth Raikage from Naruto Shippuden. I'm guessing he'll be some kind of reoccurring character who has one on one times with Nero or Dante. But moving on you'll notice that DMC5 will feature stages that are populated with civilians who are caught in the midst of demonic chaos. As soldiers take to the streets to try to get everything under control, these weird spikes begin to impale everyone. And it looks like those spikes might be absorbing the blood into this large looking fortress. Because right afterwards we see this sick looking demon sitting on this throne and blood starts spewing in it as if it's been transferred from the impaled humans we saw earlier. That looks like it's going to be the key source to this Demon King's lifespan until he's able to regain full power and break out of that hard shell. Now as far as his identity is concerned, it still remains a mystery. I know a lot of fans are saying it's Virgil's demon form and there's a possibility which I'm going to get to later down the line. But I will say that this does make it seem like it is, with the spikes on his head looking like Virgil's signature hairstyle and the blue energy emanating from his armor kind of alludes to that. And he has this vertical eye on his forehead just like the one Sparta buried in his demon form. The main thing I'm noticing about his design along with the other bosses we see in this trailer is that they all have these weird looking eyes all over their bodies. I'm not sure if that'll be the overall theme for each particular boss or it's just an aesthetic that the art team is going with. It's almost as if each boss is a combination of different demons made into one huge demon. You see this giant boss with a mouth in its stomach that uses vehicles as projectiles and there is a flying boss that shoots out these eye beams from its wings. So I'm just going to go ahead and guess that it will most likely be the eyes that dictate the different capabilities for each boss. Like the more eyes they have the harder they'll be. But moving on we get our first glimpse at our central protagonist Nero who has caused quite a bit of confusion for many reasons. The first reason being because of the photorealistic look and short hair. Many including myself were assuming that he was the reboot DMC's Dino which means Dante in name only. 
For those of you who played the game, you'll remember that Dino had short black hair that eventually went full silver by the end of the game. That look is essentially what Nero seems to be borrowing in this one. I'm not sure if they know the same barber or if Hideki Isuno is a big fan of the hairstyle. Either way, it did its job of providing great shop value. Soon afterwards, we immediately noticed the cocky character was Nero from simply just hearing his voice who's being played by the returning Johnny Young Bosch. But another reason why fans were left puzzled and somewhat disappointed was because not everyone was a fan of Nero in Devil May Cry 4. They found his character to be a whiny crybaby as opposed to the calm and swagged out Dante. I on the other hand had no problems with Nero since his gameplay mechanics were a breath of fresh air into this series. It looks like he's gone from a part-time noob to a full-time veteran. According to Itsano, DMC5 takes place 7 years after its predecessor and Nero just so happens to be expanding the Devil May Cry brand. As you can tell by his van, he's taking the demon slaying business on the road, and on the vehicle you notice it has 6 my god 099 written on it. I'm guessing since he's so intent on running a mobile demon hunting agency, he needs a business number for his clientele. So there's that creative touch we love about the series. Another thing that's changed from Devil May Cry 4 is the fact that Dante has grown closer to Nero and has gifted him with the neon Devil May Cry sign which you can find on the official building and inside Dante's office. This is a specific detail that wasn't mentioned in the game but was featured in the novelization which I'm going to be using in this video later on. As you can see, Nero has aligned himself with an enthusiastic woman named Nico who will most likely be playing the role of his personal mechanic slash assistant. Judging from the trailer, she looks to be a southern belle that takes great pride in her work. She refers to Nero's cybernetic arm as her brilliant badass piece of work that's worthy of every dime. Now seeing this, I'm wondering how it'll play into the upgrade system since there's always been a golden statue that doubles as a save point. It seems like the devs are alluding to the fact that Nico will be implemented into the shop system since we see her heckling Nero for cash in exchange for upgrading his arm. I just want to know if the Proud Souls upgrade system from DMC4 will be making a return which was used to buy new abilities. What we do know is that Nico is supposedly the granddaughter of Nell Goldstein who was the gunsmith responsible for making Dante's dual pistols Ebony and Ivory. Not sure who her parents are but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that the older black guy we saw at the beginning of the trailer could possibly be her father. Simply because she has a racially ambiguous look, like she could be mixed with something, you know. But getting back on the subject of Nero's gear, it looks like his sword Rebellion has undergone slight upgrades from an aesthetic standpoint. It looks to be much bulkier and sleeker than it did in DMC4, so Nico might have added some new touches to it, I'm guessing. And the same can be said for his Blue Rose, which looks to have went into a complete design overhaul. According to the Devil May Cry 4 novel, Nero crafted the pistol himself since the Holy Order was old fashioned and no one in Fortuna City used guns. Apparently he required two different ammo types and there is a split lag between the first and second bullet. Nero carved the image of a rose onto the gun's handle and named it the Blue Rose to symbolize the impossible being made possible, which is a concept he got from a book. Now judging from the gun used in the trailer, I'm not sure if that could be a modified version of Blue Rose because I don't see any of the rose motif carvings and it looks a lot smoother. And there wasn't really that much gameplay of the gun in action, most of it was used in cutscene form. But back on the subject of Nero's newly acquired cybernetic arm, the Devil Breaker, it looks like it'll be ushering in new gameplay elements as well as older ones. In one instance I noticed that it expanded and let off a big palm blast that knocked back all of the lesser demons. And there also seems to be a grapple line that'll most likely aid Nero in platforming. Now one of the moves that made me mark out the most is when he used the arm as a heat seeking rocket punch. As you can see it can be used to occupy incoming enemies while you're delivering a sword combo to another victim. There's also a pretty sweet callback to Devil May Cry 3 where we see Nero riding on his arm similar to how Dante rode one of Lady's missiles. And in another instance, it looks like it'll possess some kind of time slowing ability similar to Devil May Cry 3's Quicksilver. Now, if you're familiar with Nero's playstyle in Part 4, you remember that his Devil Breaker could be used for context sensitive throw attacks, which essentially meant that a grab could change depending on your enemy or boss type. So I'm kinda wondering if that element will make a return since the Devil Breaker is gone. Could this mean that the Devil Breaker is gonna wield the same ability to deal some devastating damage? I know I saw one of his signature grapples where he winds up this demon and chunks it at another one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that these special context sensitive throws will still be a thing in this game. Now I know you've all been waiting on me to talk about this specific scene because this is something that I believe we'll finally get some closure to. 
just what the hell became of Virgil after the events of the first Devil May Cry? And does this mean that him and Nero are related? Is he the big bad demon daddy? Based on all the evidence leading up to this from Devil May Cry Special Edition to the novels, I'm placing my bets on yes. Like how in order for Nero to awaken his Devil Trigger, he requires the use of Virgil's demonic sword, the Yamato. And how when he does use his demonic Jojo Bizarre Adventure looking stand, it highly resembles Virgil's demon form. Based on the Deadly Fortune novel which was written by DMC3 and 4 scenario designer Morihashi Bingo, Virgil was obsessed with looking up everything he could pertaining to his father. Since Sparta was highly worshipped by the Holy Order, that would have most likely been the reason why he visited Fortuna City. The novel also mentions that Nero grew up as an orphan and was made fun of by other kids saying that his mother was a prostitute. Since Fortuna was relatively small and everyone knew everyone, prostitutes were very common at the time, so people assumed he was a bastard child. I don't want to go too far into details, but we do notice a strange looking lady giving Virgil the eye in one of DMC4 SC's cutscenes, I'm just saying. But to get back to the point, we obviously know that the mystery villain who's taking Nero's arm is Virgil. You can tell from his regal coat design and his boots. There's also the cowl we saw him wearing during Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, except it's badly worn down this time around. And just looking closer at his face, you can tell that our power hungry antagonist has seen better days. Now to further cement my point and prove Naysayer's wrong, I want you to go back to an old interview. Back in late 2015, voice actors Ruben Langdon, Johnny Young Bosch, and Dan Southworth gave an interview during the Devil May Cry reunion panel at Comic Con. And Virgil's voice actor Dan Southworth probably gave out information that he probably shouldn't have. Take a look. So yeah, we're going to show some Dan as Kratos. Um, it, it really is a tight family. No, I think it's great how it happened because now they're going to bring us back. You can say that, right? No. Oh. oh. Well, <laughs> what? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perhaps in the future there's a alternate universe where... <laughs> so yeah, Mr. Southworth accidentally blurted out that he and his fellow demon clique were actually in fact working on a sequel for Devil May Cry 4. So this essentially means that Devil May Cry 5 has been in development for roughly over three years, which is the usual time it takes to make a solid game. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that Virgil has decided to teach his son a good old lesson on what it means to lose someone and not have the power to protect them. From hearing Nero scream his girlfriend Kitty's name, it sounds as if she may have been kidnapped or even worse, killed by Virgil. As to what Virgil might want with the double brinker arm is a mystery. There's still no sign as to what happened to his Yamato either. But moving to the last part, we got a nice shot of a much older Dante riding on what looks to be a demonically charged motorcycle. Now just looking at his design, it reminded me of the time we got a teaser of Devil May Cry 4 back in 2015's Tokyo Game Show. If you ask me, his outfit looks very similar to that look which didn't really make the cut in the official game with Devil May Cry 4. As far as the exact time this game takes place is concerned, I still think it'll be between the events of part 4 and 2, since part 2 tends to be the red-headed stepchild of the bunch right next to the reboot. And Devil May Cry 2's Dante seems to be overpowered compared to the more recent versions, but who knows. But with all that said, I'd like to bring this breakdown to a close. I want to know what you guys think. And I just want to apologize for this video being so late, but what are your thoughts on the new game? Does the new look fit the Devil May Cry formula? And do you think Virgil will be the main villain? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media platforms with all your friends and followers. I love what I do and I do it all for you guys. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.